my name is Jeremiah Grossman, founder and CTO of White Hat Security. And right now I'd like to show you the amount of information that your browser is able to reveal to a website, basically any website that you visit. And it doesn't really matter what browser you're using. You could be using Google Chrome or Firefox or an Internet Explorer. The demonstrations I'm going to show you are fairly browser agnostic. The second thing I'd like to share is that my browser right now is currently logged into both my Facebook and Twitter account, and I'll explain in a second why that's important. But third is that this website is on Hacker. could be any particular website out there, but for our purposes right now, it's just something that's hosted on my local machine. Now, as you notice, this uh, little Twitter follow button follows my mouse around the screen. This is just a third-party web widget that Twitter provides to website developers so they can easily follow particular accounts. And it's following my mouse around because normally in an exploitation scenario, this, browse, this button would be transparent. You wouldn't, the user wouldn't see it. So when they visually click on something like a link or an image, that account automatically gets a follow. In this case, it would be called a follow jacking attack, you know, a variant of click jacking. The second thing I want to show you is we're going to click jack the user again, but this time, instead of using Twitter, we're going to use Facebook like buttons. So again, it follows the mouse around the screen, and they, the user will mistakenly click it, and the button will go away rather quickly. I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you later what that means, but essentially, you're going to de-anonymize the user at this uh, point in time. The next thing we're going to do is start unlocking some information that the website was able to glean. So right here, we're going to hit the declassify button, and it's able to accurately tell what I, who I am. My case, my name is Jeremiah Grossman, and it's able to pull back my profile pictures from those websites. So it's a little spooky at this point because it's de-anonymized. We're going to get to some more profile information in a second, but let's just look at some of the basics that it's able that this website is able to learn about our computer. In this case, we're going to unlock it, you know, it grabs this information from your browser's user agent. It's figured out that I'm running on an Intel Mac operating system version 10.7.5 and that I am not virtualized. The way it's detecting if, it, if I'm virtualized or not is by looking at the screen dimensions, in this case 1680 by 1050. All computers really have a standard screen dimension size and all the different screen dimensions are, it's a finite list. So if you're virtualized, usually the virtualization window is an abnormal size, something you don't normally see on a computer. So if the screen size is abnormal, you know that it's probably running a virtualized environment, which is helpful for exploitation purposes. It's able to figure out that my browser is running Chrome 20 to version 22, my primary language is English, ActiveX is unavailable, which is nice to know for exploitation. And since I'm running on Chrome on a Mac rather than Internet Explorer and Windows, it's unavailable. 24 bits of color depth and so on. The next thing we're going to unlock is the browser plugins. Browser plugins allow the browser to read in rich file types such as PDFs and Flash and, and things like that. So the, you know, so the browser provides native facilities actually to for the website to detect what plugins that you have available. And it's useful for fingerprinting purposes as well as exploitation. So right now I have 13 plugins, including SharePoint and Google Talk and all sorts of things. The next thing we're going to unlock is browser add-ons and extensions. In Firefox, they're called add-ons, and in Chrome, they're called extensions. But what these little pieces of installable software do is extend the functionality of the browser. So right now you can see I have uh, ad block turned on, and uh, a plugin that de uh, an add-on or extension rather in Chrome that deduplicates all my tabs. So we're going to hit this declassify button and it's able to detect what extensions I have installed. I don't have time to get into exactly how this is done, but it's done but I explain it in one of the uh, one of the blog posts uh, associated with this video. The next thing is we're going to do some IP geolocation to try to figure out the user's real location. So we're going to unlock this. And based upon my IP address and some geolocation web services that I pull back, it's able to figure out that right now I'm sitting in Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysia, uh, about to go on stage for Hack in the Box conference. So it's able to grab this information very quickly. It works great in the U.S. and it works great all over the world. So it's able to tell a whole lot of things about my latitude, longitude, and things that you wouldn't normally, that a normal user wouldn't expect a website to know about them. Next thing I want to show you, and this goes to the click jacking attacks that I mentioned earlier that we mistakenly clicked on Twitter follow buttons and Facebook like buttons. We hit this button, and it's, again, it's able to glean my name, my Twitter screen name, my Twitter description, uh, how many followers I have, uh, my location set there, and uh, my, my 
blog URL, basically everything they need uh, need to know, including the things on Facebook. Right, it's able to find out my Facebook username is Jeremiah Grossman and that I am male. Very useful information for uh, for a malicious website or even a site that maybe just wants to sell you something. Next, it was able to pull back images, and I'll go down to the bottom here to click the the button. So it's able to see all the pictures that I publicly posted to Facebook. Again, they're public, but it's kind of interesting that this website that I just had a single click on can tell you know all these pictures uh, you know throughout my life. And the last one I want to show you is it can also tell what other websites you are logged into. So we hit this declassify button, and behind the scenes, it's actually sending requests to all these services and trying to detect whether or not I'm logged into Twitter, which I am, and Yahoo and Google and Facebook and Amazon. It also does a check for Reddit, but right now I'm not logged into Reddit, so hence not the link. So this just gives you a quick taste of uh, the types of information your browser, any web browser, reveals to the everyday websites. Not saying that uh, they collect this information, but they definitely could.